in the event that regulated trapping is banned, I think that there would be this unfortunate view on fur bears that doesn't exist now. These species might become more of what people view as pests. We don't want that perception of wildlife. The biggest threat to our wildlife is the diminishing habitat. That is the crux of fur bearer management right there. That's the stuff that we need to be focusing on because without the habitat, the fur bearers will not be there. Vermont is slowly losing habitat and the amount of human wildlife conflicts is continually increasing. It wasn't only a few weeks ago, right in the field in back of the horse pasture, there was five coyotes. We're just half a mile from the main road. When the general public has conflict with wildlife, they call the game warden. The warden you know, has the ability to provide the name, oh, well, you know Jake Traps, you know, call, call him up. Without us, there's no resolution to conflict. I've trapped Berlin Pond for a lot of years. I trap it for the city of Montpelier. It's a water quality issue. This is a water source for the city of Montpelier. So if we had an abundance of beaver, it can create diseases like Giardia. Even though we have a good water system and a wonderful filtration plant, everything's got to be kept in check. You do hear conversations regarding beaver baffles. What we've discovered on our side is it generally just moves the colony to a different spot in our source waters and it doesn't keep the impactual issues down. There is a place for beaver to not be bothered. The drinking water sources for communities and things that impact roadways, that is not the place for beavers to have large populations. They dammed it up to the point on the next road over that I lost a lot of field. Typically, this part right here where you see the most open water is no more than 20 feet wide. We had hundreds and hundreds of broccoli plants. A woodchuck was going up under there and every night would clip the tops off of 200 or 300 plants. Over the course of a week, that's you know 2,000 plants, which is potentially even a couple thousand dollars if they're full pound heads. This is a situation where the infrastructure of an airport is at risk. Water's lapping at both sides of the runway. There's been trains that have derailed because of erosion from beaver. We allow the beaver population to explode like it did in Massachusetts. They created that problem by banning traffic. A lot of our coon damage is actually on top of our bunker silos. They climb up there and rip into the plastic. Not only is it ruining plastic, ruining feed, but it's also feces on top of the bunk that gets into the feed and can make our cows sick. They start attacking cattle. We've lost calves to coyotes. They're going to get into their gardens. They're going to get into their houses, into their attics. If you look at the volume of coyote attacks in Massachusetts, it's, it says something. There's a one bill to change trapping regulations to include best management practices. Before we could even get that through legislature, there are two more bills out to try to end trapping. It's very important that people on both sides of the issue pledge to disagree peacefully and to have these discussions like adults. When we only look at a single issue without putting it in context of broader economics, broader social dynamics, I think we really do a disservice to the conversation. I would try to discourage legislators from voting to ban trapping. If you have any questions, you should call the Fish and Wildlife Department. I would urge decision makers to look beyond the emotion of this topic. Take a second and look at the science and listen to these people who have dedicated their lives to wildlife management. Listen to your biologists. None of them want bad things for wildlife. They are a proponent of trapping because it's a strong tool.